Amen. God bless you, everyone. Welcome to Light Purpose Ministry. And we help you to unlock your God-given purpose. And if you guys know, we've been up this journey for eight months. It's going to be nine months next week. I want to give a very special thank you to Jermaine Moreno for coming here every two weeks just to film, to be part of his vision, to be part of something big in the ministry. Jermaine, you're welcome to stick out your hand. Let's give a a friendly wave to our viewers. <laughs> Amen. Um, just to let you guys know, uh, I know you guys heard from, from, from sound and background, but we're working on sound effects. That was your name. <laughs> um, so I want to give you guys a couple of steps on this year alone, or what, what plans and a vision, what I want to do for Life Purpose Ministry. And as you guys know, we are going to finish this, this series where, we, where we've been having a conversation starting um, I, we're going to close it next week on part five. And I hope this series been blessing you, been encouraging you to, to, to discover your destination, to, to discover your purpose as well. And a quick announcement, on February 8th and February 14th, we're going to have a, a, a sermon series, a two-part sermon series on February 8th. We're going we're gonna to bring down Dr. Javier Martinez. He's going to be sharing with us, and we're going to have a Q&A on February the 14th. Uh, a, a young couple I met, Catalina at the soccer, she's one of the soccer players at Negro High School, and Ryan Alvarado, I met him at the McCann Memorial High School, he's a baseball player, and I'm just so inspired by their relationship together, how they always keep Jesus in the center, and, and I'm just very excited for the journey, what God is doing with his life purpose ministry and we're going to continue to to grow and be faithful and just to see big things what god is doing in the real grande valley and i'm just excited about this. today's message that i title a one of part four a destination that every journey starts with the first step i'm going to have jermaine to go ahead and just open up in prayer thank you father for allowing us to gather today we thank you lord for the beginning of the week I pray that you use Jerry today, speak to our hearts, change our lives, and I pray in the name of the Lord that you bless every person that's listening today. Amen. Amen. So I want to continue with this conversation with what we have the past several weeks on destination. I hope you were blessed by our guest speaker, Abel Gomez. Man, he brought down the storm, the roof on fire, man. That guy, you know, he talked about keep your head in the game and throughout the book of Acts. And we're very blessed to have Abel Gomez coming this past Monday to share with us. And uh, as you guys know, we have two young ladies that I want to invite you. That that was Ariana and, and Michaela. They've just been helping me in the ministry as well. They do so much. We're so young, but yet they have a heart to pursue and to serve. And one of the Bible scriptures we're going to open, as you guys know, every year we're always going to have like a, like a restart. <coughs> <clears throat> we're going to have a reset. Now, maybe the year of 2020 didn't, didn't seem to be a year that, you know, have so many expectations because of COVID and everything going on. And I know it's just been a lot of challenges and moments that, you know, you know it just felt discouragement. And I want to have the Jermaine to read Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. You know, I like what Paul wrote. The Paul, he knows what it means to, to keep pressing forward. He knows what it means to not to live in the past. Maybe so moment uh, in the past didn't seem the the journey that you wanted to step in maybe you know with school or maybe with, with, with your job or financial and maybe you seem like you're, you're you're trapped and you're stuck but i like what paul said i keep pressing forward to the goal which is in heaven for in, in christ yes. jesus be uh, um i want to give you guys a statement right here a man that always walk with god always get to his destination you know when i when i step into my journey when i was 17 years old when i accepted christ in high school i, I never knew about my destination 
I never knew the plan or the purpose or the calling that I was gonna go after achieving after to that journey. So, and I learned in in my in my journey that every <coughs> journey starts with the first step and, and every process and it's it, it slow. Everything is slow. Everything patient and everything will time me. And I know most of you guys know uh, uh, my journey of uh, going to church or you know pursuing something greater in my life. I'm with one in a girlfriend. Not sure everybody knows me about that. And and I learned in my when pursuing someone like a relationship or dating, I myself need to grow. I myself need to allow God to work in my life before pursuing that relationship. Pursuing that destination. I want to share that. I know Valentine's Day is around the corner and we're going to have amazing guest speaker, Javi Martinez. And we'll have Catalina and Ryan Amorado going to be sharing their story as well. And I want to mention a person in the Old Testament. He's not mentioned too much, but in the Bible in 1 King chapter 11 to 14, talk about a man named Jeroboam. Jeroboam uh, was one of the, the soldiers under King Solomon. And I want to do, I want to summarize a little bit now. Let me give you a couple of key notes about his character, a man named Jeroboam. He makes him a, God makes him an offer to Jeroboam. Jeroboam, he makes him an offer. Now, I think I um, know that Jeroboam was a soldier under um, King Solomon, and he was a son of King David. Now, if you guys know, uh, uh, I know that King Solomon was the richest black man. King Solomon, he owned everything across the land. He had wives, he had concubines, he had riches, he had wisdom. But there was a moment that King Solomon walked away from God. King Solomon disobeyed, he walked away from God. He, he makes and but the Jeroboam was just a soldier under uh, King Solomon and oh, watch this up. The Solomon, um, uh, King Solomon was not about uh, Jeroboam's son, but Rehoboam was King Solomon's son because Jeroboam was just a regular person, just like you and me. He wasn't special, he wasn't under, he wasn't under the, the, the leadership of a king, or he wasn't like in high. You know, on the top of a um, the pedestal, or he was just a regular guy. But the same thing with with, with Jeroboam, that God gave an offer to him. The same thing that God gave up to us. Just like when we apply to the Old Testament to the covenant, it applies to the New Covenant because we live under the Holy Spirit. We live under grace. Now, now I'm going to be talking a little bit about. Um, excuse me. Talk a little bit about the four mistakes. Or mistake what, what Jeroboam did, what, what we can learn, what we, what we can apply to our life. Now imagine the, how the same scenario when, when Solomon was, when we have God for wisdom, but Solomon, he, he, he walked away, he was disobedient. Now there are four mistakes what Jeroboam did when he became a king over, over um, Israel because God was looking to pass on the kingdom. See, see, many times in, in those days, they have kingdoms. Um, they, they have to pass it on to the next king to rule over, uh, over the land, just like with, with, with um, King David and King Solomon. Now, check, now, what's this now? Number, number one, he didn't walk in obedience with God. Jeroboam had everything, but he didn't walk in obedience with God. As we in the hmm. journey, as we have to trust in him if we rely on our hope and our faith in jesus and many times and many many you're in a season that you in your destination when you, when you feel like you know you're disconnected from god maybe if you feel that you know you know you know god doesn't love you you know all the mistakes all the you know things that you did wrong but the bible says in john 15 13 that greater love has no one in this who lay down his life for his friends because Jesus who died on the cross for your sins where he can have a relationship with you. First John 4 18 that perfect love will cast out fear 
I mean, yeah, but the love of Pat Sophia because he wants to walk with you. He created you for you can have a relationship with you. Now, look what um, Luke, um, the main, if you can read Luke chapter 11, verse 28. And I will place you on the throne of Israel, and you will rule over all that your heart desires. If you listen to what I tell you and follow my ways and do whatever I consider to be right, and if you obey my decrees and command as my servant David did, then I will be with you always. I will establish an enduring dynasty for you as I did for David, and I will give Israel to you. Because God is an author of your finish, even author of, of the faith, and He wants to help you in the journey to, to give you multiplication to provide for you. I, I, I know in, in, in my own life what I, I, I learned, and been, you know, having this relationship with no Jesus, it, it, it took me a process, it, it took me, you know, um, to, to learn to know the dream, to know the steps that, that God has for my life. Because when Jeroboam, when, when he, he stepped into, to, to when God gave him to this, he fell. He, he astray. He was disobedient. The Bible says in Isaiah 119, if you eat the good of the land, the fruit of the land, uh, uh, you'll be obedient. I'm sorry, I forgot the scripture memory. But in Isaiah 119, because why? Because you have a plan for your life. Now, I'm going to number two. He failed <clears throat> to to learn from his past. I know everybody has a story. Everybody in this world has uh, all, all walk of life. I may I may have a different walk of life. Jermaine have a different walk of life. But everybody was designed. But yet we we keep thinking about our mistakes. We keep thinking about our past. You know, I feel unworthy. I feel like. I can't pursue, you know, the dream what God has for me. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, that cast all your cares upon him, for he cares about you. Because many times that we, we live in the past, the glory day, I, I can imagine me and Jermaine working about high school, <laughs> like mad or pet rallies and, you know, football games and, you know, just, you know, no, no funny moments in my high school years. And, but yet, we're always thinking about our past, but the Bible says in Second Corinthians that we have become new in Christ. The old have passed and the new have come. Because when you step into a journey to discover Jesus, that everything has become new. We have grown to, to, to learn about Christ. I'm sure that Jermaine, he didn't know me when I was in high school, but Jermaine saw me grow in my early 20s when I was going to the youth service at least that I woke up. But, you know, man, we've been, we've been around for like 10 years or so, <laughs> but, but yet we keep, we can, and life is about growing, and, and everything is, is just uh, a process. It's not going to happen overnight, but it, it, it is a process for us to grow, for us to, to, to be encouraged to one and another. So that's number two. He failed to learn about his path. Number three, what, see what, what Joe Bond did. He didn't affect godly counsel. He didn't affect Godly counsel. And there was a story in George Ball and First King that he sent a prophet of, of, of a man of God to Jeroboam. And because Jeroboam was making so many mistakes, he, he didn't affect Godly counsel. God was sending prophets. God was sending messengers to Jeroboam. But why he didn't affect it? Now, our, our own life, you know, if we have, if we want to grow, if we want to to have change it, we need to accept godly counsel. I have mentors in my own life, in my early twenties, that they always address me because they want me to go back and trap. They want me to go back in the road to my destination. You know, the time when I was, maybe I was uh, in a moment of I was feeling jealous, when I was feeling like I was misbehaving, and or maybe because I I uh, was just going through, you know, emotions, and God will send messengers into your life. God will send people to, 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 to correct you out of love, not to discourage you, to, to, to help you. And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure me and Jermaine have, you know, uh, mentors or, or pastors or someone that will help us to get back in track to, to run this race, to walk in this journey. 
because if we allow our heart to be cold, our heart to be distant from God, then how can it be changed? How can it be a prophet to teach us, to, to guide us, to, to allow us to, you know, to be growing and to, to, to change in, in our season? So then I want to ask uh, Jermaine to read Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. <clears throat> His host was amazed to see that he sat down to eat without first performing the hand washing ceremony. I'm sorry, Proverbs twelve fifteen. Yes. Fools think their own way is right, but the wise listens to others. You know, one of the things uh, in, in my journey about Proverbs, and I like the book of Proverbs, is Proverbs and Ecclesiastes will, will teach us, even the Gospel of Jesus and the Matthew. It will, will help us because, uh, because we, we are meant in the journey to, to have other people to help us, to have other people to guide our steps. And, and I feel like, you no, know, we're going to continue pursuing and we're going to continue to, to grow. And I know in, in the Old Testament, when, when God will send messengers or prophets to, to warn, to, to help us to stay in the right track. And I want, um, we're going to continue to read here, um, number four. He refused to change. He refused mm -hmm. to change. You always hear the saying, you know, come as you are. But in reality, you can come as you are, but you're not going to stay that way. So when you step into a church, when you step into the Bible, and you know, you, you're going to grow. You know, I'll never forget when I was 17 years old, when I first carried a Bible in my hands. And, and, and my thought, I thought the Bible was just like, a, like an old history book. I thought the Bible was just for old people. So when I was 17 years old, I always thought the <laughs> church was for old people with white hair, you know. But that's, I didn't know. But, you know, but yet I, I wanted to change in my life journey. I wanted to, to become a man to be a blessing if I have a future life or to become a pastor to shepherd a, a, a church or a flock and in my own life I want to a change for the better I want to be able to guide people to discover the God-given purpose and I'm going to share this you know I, I'm sure that as you guys know um, I do have some regrets in my early 20s a lot of friendship or relationship I have and and I just wish, you know, life, it's not about, you know, you can't rewind the past. What happened in the past, you can't, you know, fix it. But the good news is that there's a future. You can make a better future. You can make a better destination. But every journey starts with the first step because many times that we, we, uh, we allow changes in our life. We uh, allow growing to, to become a person, to be strong. And, and be courageous and I just wish that I can you know um, reconnect with the relationship in the past but I know God has a season for everything and I'm sure Jermaine talked to me a couple of times you know life has seasons you know people are meant to be there for, for a reason for a season but uh, we continue to, to grow and, and, and pursue and to be strong and I want to ask uh, Jermaine to read Philippians chapter 1 and I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Amen. Amen. I want to, you know, I just hope, you know, if you guys continue to grow, continue to pursue the calling, the destination for your life. And we, and, and we never want to close our service without giving you an invitation of hope. If you want Jesus to step into your heart, to do greater things in your life, do not make the mistakes what Jeroboam did, but be renewed and to, to build your heart for a greater purpose. Be a faith builder. And I want to just give you an invitation of hope. If you never accepted Jesus, have your personal Lord and Savior. I want to give you the opportunity for you to accept Jesus. Maybe you, you backslided. Maybe you you you've been distracted. You've been distracted. 
maybe your, your marriage is falling apart or maybe you're just, you know, you, you lost the passion in your heart. But I want to give you an opportunity to, to renew your heart. Jesus is in a miracle working business. Jesus is a business. Amen. Now would you be people pray after me? My loving Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Jesus, I come to you. Jesus, I open up my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. I confess and repent for all my sins. Jesus, I want you to be the Lord, Savior in my life. Jesus, I believe that my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life, and I declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Welcome to the Kingdom Light family that we will grow together we will walk together and we're just going to keep pressing forward next week part five i'm going to close my series i want to be talking about that words can shape your future words can shape your future and and we always want to have an honor to have jermaine to, to go ahead and, and, and close the service father god we come before your presence once more thanking you for the word that was shared today i pray that it was a blessing to those who have heard and those who will listen to it Keep on blessing Jared and his ministry, Lord. We pray that you keep on speaking to our hearts, change our lives, and protect us, Lord. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Life Purpose page. We're looking forward to see you next week as we close part five in our message series. And uh, I want to continue to encourage you in this journey. God bless you. See you next week. Take care.